Wait, Susan, it didn't go on. Oh, there we go. Good job. Good job. Bravo. Can I get one of those too? You really need to get the IIG is going to get something like this. Because we're all here. You know what I mean? Okay, so our next speaker is a, uh, a self-professed skeptical junkie, uh, a member of the Independent Invest Investigation Group and a co-founder of the Monterey County Skeptics, and she's here to tell us about guerrilla skepticism in Wikipedia. So please welcome Susan Gruber. For those of you who didn't recognize me without my beard on, now you can see what I look like. Uh, all those people, thank you so much for buying beards from us. I don't know where I'm going to get the pig, so he's going to be right here, okay? So you can get a nice picture of this is pig. So my name is Susan Gerbic, and I am from the Independent Investigation Group down in LA. And, woo, and I'm on the stage. This is so awesome. This is my sixth town. So, real skepticism, which is this big old thing over here. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about gorilla skepticism on Wikipedia and perfectly in with Michael. Isn't that perfect? Ray is awesome. He managed to, I didn't have a clue he was going to talk about um, skeptical content on Wikipedia and how important that is to us as skeptics to get the message out there. But um, gorilla skepticism is a, a phrase coined by Mark Edward, who was kind of tired of just talking, people talking about, talking about, and complaining, playing, writing letters, blah, blah, blah. Let's get out and do something. So, guerrilla skepticism is an underground, um, it's more of a grass move, grassroots, kind of mole like, kind of um, getting the message out there in creative new ways, sometimes spontaneous, sometimes with planning, but usually it's the person who is very unprepared, they don't know what's going to happen to them. And guerrilla skepticism on Wikipedia is from um, Tim Farley, brilliant man, um, the new J. Rev, uh, yeah, great fellow, and um, so I took this all from him, and I've just kind of he's gone on to other new projects, and I'm kind of just kind of, you know, take trying to barely get in his shoes, which are really huge, by the way. So, um, real skepticism is the action where we take well-written, carefully cited articles, and we put them in into Wikipedia articles that are badly missing skeptical content, or at least updating the skeptical content, because some have and some have no skeptical content at all. And it's not vandalism, which it kind of sounds like. It has another, we're totally following the rules, because we want our articles to stay up there. I do have a blog, and um, you know, who doesn't? But um, on my blog, it is, um, I'm not gonna have, I'm gonna have to talk really fast, because you know, I only have like 10 minutes, so I'm going to um, send everybody to my URL that I have at the very end, and please approach me, I'm at the IIG booth, I'm, I will talk your head off if you have any questions whatsoever. If it's really technical, you know, you can go to Jim, uh, Tim Farley, or please make comments on my blog, and that way we can um, talk about how this, how we can proceed, because this needs to be improved. Our, our content on the skeptical uh, is, is not very good. So um, I'm here really to ask you, uh, I'm gonna give you a lot of examples, and I can probably show you hundreds of examples of things I've done on Wikipedia already, and um, they're not perfect. Sometimes they're, they have a lot of improvement that need to be done on them, but I'm asking for help. I really need your help. We, as a skeptical movement, really need. In fact, I'm not just needing. I'm not just asking. I'm pleading. I'm begging. We need to get ourselves on Wikipedia. That is the world looking at us. And come on, guys. We got. We got to take care of this. This is. This is getting silly. Um, Wikipedia. Oh, there we go. Um, why Wikipedia? Everybody goes to Wikipedia. And if you're not, if you don't go to Wikipedia. I don't know, that just doesn't make sense. Usually within the first five hits that somebody, uh, when you search for a term or a name, you're going to come up with a Wikipedia link. Um, but people are going to go to Wikipedia because Wikipedia is comfortable, they know how to use it, they understand the hyperlink idea, that if they don't understand the term, they can go into the, to someplace else and, and uh, you know, get more references. There's no pop-ups, there's no viruses, there's, you know, there's all those things people are comfortable going to a, 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 a Wikipedia page for also it tends to be very neutral in, in a lot of ways so that they, they know they're going to get a neutral kind of um, uh, you know a 
appeal to it, hopefully, if we've, if we've done our work correctly. Our audience is not us. We are already informed. We already understand this kind of thing. Of course, we might need some brushing up on some things, maybe. But our audience that we are writing for is the world. These people, I, everything I'm going to say, I want you to remember that you need to approach it from looking at it from the viewpoint of somebody who is not uh, necessarily one of us, but somebody who may be on the fence, they may be woo, they may have never even thought of it. They've never even uh, uh, had uh, ever occurred to them. But the example I'm going to give right now is um, for somebody who has probably had not had um, their, maybe their mother or their grandmother or somebody is being, or grandfather is being approached, they're starting to get involved like maybe Sylvia Brown, uh, for example, and you maybe don't have a clue. They had never really thought about psychics. You know, psychics were all summer. You know, I never really thought about it. So they're going to Google um, Sylvia Brown. I call it the Goldilocks effect. What's going to end up happening is people are going to, they're going to go to the internet, put in their favorite search engine the name Sylvia Brown, and they're looking for some kind of explanation of who she is. What is this? Should I be worried that grandma's starting to send money to spend buying these books and going to these shows? And, you know, should I be concerned? I don't really know. Some of my friends say yes, my friends say no. What do I know? They're not going to want to go to a site like Sylvia Brown's. Isn't that scary? Look at those pictures identical. The woman is, I'm not psychic, and I know she's got a, she's got a complex about her neck. So, um, <laughs> I am a photographer, thank you very much. So I do know that that's exactly what she's doing, it's hiding her neck. It's not about nails. But um, pa, this is her site. People aren't necessarily going to want to go to her site because that's not, it's not neutral, it's positive. They don't know if they're going to get a virus, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff. So they're not going to want to go to her unless they're looking for ticket information. This site, on the other hand, is one of my favorite sites. Robert Lancaster. Robert the Man Lancaster out there. Unfortunately, if somebody's looking for information on Sylvia Brown, this and they're just looking for something generic, this isn't mostly likely the, the spot they're going to go to first because it is, you know, obviously negative. But we hopefully will get them over there eventually. So here's where they're going to end up. They're going to end up on Sylvia Brown's Wikipedia page. And shame on us if this is not in shape. Okay? We have a lot of skeptical content. In fact, almost all of this is negative. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm on here, but I wasn't the first. There's lots of people who are on there. And you can follow the links to, to Robert's site on here. And after they're informed and they've read all this, then they're going to be ready for Robert's site and they're going to be ready for Sylvia's site and look at it and they're like, yeah, all right. Grandma, uh -uh. <laughs> cut you off. No, no way. Okay, really quickly, I'm going to give two examples of what I have uh, done, and that wasn't the first one. The, the next one is the, the Pegasus, which is why I have Pig up here with me. This is the official j Rev Pig. He's been to all the towns, he's been to a lot of the cruises, he's been, even been on Alaskan Glacier. He's been photographed with everybody, and he's got autographs to prove it. So the Pegasus Awards, um, again, we're not talking about you guys who know what the Pegasus is. We're talking about the general public who has no clue. Our audience is um, the non-skeptical side. This is the primary source when j Riff, uh, announces a, um, uh, the Pegasus Awards April 1st every year. This can be cited on Wikipedia, but it's not the best site. We need something like this. Thank you, Michael. Again, we got ourselves into the press. And when the LA Times picks it up, this is a secondary source. This can very well go to Wikipedia. And it is not, how do I say, a lot of editors go to Pegasus Awards and they'll put all this stuff on the Pegasus Award. Who's reading that? We need to get it onto the winner's pages. And this is what I've done here with CVS Pharmacy. And you can read that very quickly. Not only is it got a, a, a link, this is Gorilla Skepticism. This is a hyperlink to homeopathy, to the JREF, and to Pegasus Award. Now, who's not going to want to look up the Pegasus Award? Doesn't that sound cute? Okay, this is uh, my second and last example. This is Vasula Bryden. Never heard of her before until Joe Nickel wrote an article about her. She has um, she gets messages from her spirit guides and it's automatic handwriting and so on. And she's written several books. She was very reputable. Um, and um, you know, I never heard of her. I don't know anything about her. On her Wikipedia page, totally unchallenged, absolutely unchallenged. And you know what? Shame on us again. Come on, let's get this taken care of. Until Skeptical Inquirer magazine published this article by Joe Nickel just a few months ago, a heaven stenographer, the guy who handed the Silla Ryden, 
and here's what I wrote on her Wikipedia page, which I got an email today that has all been updated again, so this is probably going to have a look at the history. We'll see what's happening. I have somebody that worked on it. Um, there you go, he's talking. This is what a, this is verb, verbiage what I put on here, purported messages. I can't give an opinion on Wikipedia, but I can quote somebody who does give an opinion. So then here's the next one. <coughs> As you can see, um, he's, he's really getting right on her. He's not in touch, she is not in touch with supernatural entities, but simply engaging in self-deception that in turn deceives the credulous. How would you like to see that if you were one of her followers? Pretty cool, huh? And then he goes further. Her misspellings and grammar are identical to those written by Jesus, God, Mary, and her own invisible guardian angel, Daniel. It gets better. He calls her out. One suspects that if she were prevented from seeing what she was being written, the entity supposedly would guide, guiding her hand would be unable to so follow, faithfully follow the lines. Isn't that awesome? I get chills when I read these kinds of things, knowing that her followers and people who don't know any better are looking at this going, oh, oh, okay. And, um, I, I have this thing about, I think skeptics like numbers, so I'm going to just give you a couple really quick numbers and then I'm basically done. Um, it's, it, if you're going to do something, you need to have some way of measuring your results. So one of the things that I have done, I, I'm with the IIG and on our website, um, I started monitoring. We had Wikipedia entries before I started getting involved in this about six months ago and our hit rate was about 4% of people who are going to Wikipedia pages and then coming over to our main homepage. And we're at, um, in June, we had 6.5%, so it's improving our hit rate. And I'm just barely getting started, and I'm asking, blaming, begging people to help get involved. And um, CSI, Barry Carr, gave me permission to um, announce that um, in May of last year, 4% of their hits just got the Cole Inquire magazine came over from Wikipedia pages, and it's now 4.7 in June. So over time, you should be able to see as people edit Wikipedia that it's making a real difference, and people who probably have never heard of skepticism at all are coming over to our sites. And of course, I'm not going to have questions, so I'm going to eat up that time really quickly to announce one more thing. This is my um, other project, and this is really important on us. When the media and when the public goes to is see somebody on TV, CNN, a blog, a newspaper article, and they don't know who we are, they don't know who James Randi is, they don't know who Phil Plait is, they, you know, maybe they do, but come on, really? You know, they're going to Google them, they're going to go to their web pages, and what are they going to find? Most of these people have badly written Wikipedia entries. We don't look credible. We do not look like that anybody's taking any you know, interest in our people. A lot of them are missing pictures. I mean, some of them are in good shape, but the majority of them are missing or they're, they're just not there at all. And I'm just gonna quickly put that there so you can look at it and not listen to me. I'm sure you're gonna be reading this over. These are some American skeptics. Almost all of these pages are in bad need of updating. And I'm really, really asking you to please go to my blog. Let's get this taken care of. You know, we're adding new skeptical spokespeople. Whether you like these spokespeople or not, they are our spokespeople and they represent us. We are skeptics and they are skeptics and in the, in the general world, that's all they see. We're, we're equal. And if we do not have their backs, if we do not have, uh, if we do not take responsibility for them, if we do not say, um, you know, look at us, I mean, how can we expect the world to take us take us seriously if we can't even take our own spokespeople seriously? So that's what I'm advocating, okay? Um, I don't think I have any questions. Please go to my blog. Um, thank you to Tim Farley, there he is at websonarm.net, and Mark Edward for, um, his help, his help with the, uh, everything, and a skeptic blog is where you can find all of us. Thank you. I'll take the questions. Yeah, corner me in the hallway. Boy, I tell you what. Well, I'm not going to go there with anything else.